Hello students, welcome to one more session. Students, in this video, let me explain the various types of uh, nutrition in plants. In the previous video, I have discussed with you about introduction of uh, nutrition. Now, let us find out the types of nutrition today. So, there are two types of modes of nutrition that find out in the plants, right? What are the two types of nutrition, autotrophic nutrition and then? heterotrophic nutrients. Plants synthesize their own food or starch or carbohydrate by using sunlight and carbon dioxide and in the presence of the chlorophyll, right? So hence, the plants, green plants and blue color, green color algae, cyanobacteria, which are considered as autotrophs, as they can prepare their own food materials. Now, if you carefully see the heterotrophic nutrition, the heterotrophic nutrition is of three types. What are the first one? Saprophytic nutrition, second one, parasitic nutrition, third one, insectivorous nutrition, and the fourth one, symbiotic nutrition. So basically there are three, but four different types of nutrition we can see in the plants. What is saprophytic nutrition? Saprophytic nutrition is nothing but it's a mode of heterotrophic nutrition by which plants or organisms obtain their food from organic dead and decaying organic matter or organisms. Even it comes from the excreta, even it comes from fallen leaves, broken twigs or from the uh, food articles. Now, what are the types of nutrition that are commonly seen in the plants? First one, symbiotic nutrition. What is symbiotic nutrition? Let us find out. As I said, symbiosis when two different belongings or organisms two different categories shows a close association without harmful effects is considered as the symbiotic nutrition they are termed as uh, symbiotic organisms and both the plants and obtained benefited from each other by obtaining the food body materials or food molecules now for example, the association of fungi, fungus and trees. Suppose, here if you see, lichens are often called as the symbiotic algae. They are living on the trees and showing a type of nutrition called symbiotic nutrition. And while the fungus are heterotrophic, uh, heterotrophic organisms, lichens are heterotrophs, whereas trees are autotrophs, right? Now, most characteristic features of lichens are resembling to fungi. Therefore, it is heterotrophic. Now, what I am trying to say, you can see the lichens. Here you can see the lichens. These are called as lichens. These are called as lichens. You can see the sample of lichens on the surface of tree. Here, tree is not getting any harmful effects from the lichen. Lichen is not getting any harmful effect from the tree. Both are getting benefit. Mutual understanding, mutualism. Mutually they are getting benefit. So that's why it is called as a symbiotic association. Now, uh, let me say a point. While the fungi are heterotrophs, fungus or lichens are heterotrophs. Now, if you see, the lichens are heterotrophs, but does not harmful to the plant. Whereas plants are autotrophs. So, in this situation, both are getting benefit. Now, let me say one more thing. If you see the types of nutrition, rhizobium is a bacterium found in the soil that helps in fixing nitrous. Now, in the leguminous plants or leguminous crops, if you see carefully, rhizobium is a bacteria which shows a symbiotic relation with the leguminous crops. What are leguminous crops? What are the examples for leguminous crops? Let us find out. Do these leguminous crops harmful to this bacteria? Let us see. If you see the leguminous crops, they are including the groundnuts, blue green, uh, green grams, blue uh, green grams, and uh, the black grams, and also other kind of uh, leguminous crops. So, this rhizobium bacteria lives in the root nodules of these plants and helps in the process of nitrogen fixation. As you know that there is huge amount of nitrogen available in the atmosphere, in the air, 
78 to 79% of nitrogen is available. But this uh, nitrogen which is there in the atmosphere will not useful for plants. Why? Because it is an atomic state. So this atomic state of nitrogen should be converted into should be converted into the molecular state of nitrogen. The molecular state of nitrogen. So in this state or in this situation. The molecular nitrogen can be directly taken by the plant roots to the soil water. So, to convert uh, the nitrogen into gases, nitrogen into crystal nitrogen. Crystal nitrogen includes urea, uric acid, and uh, ammonia, nitrates, etc. So, uh, these are very beneficial uh, reactions uh, to a uh, common leguminous crops by the rhizobium bacteria or nitrogen fixing bacteria. Now, if you carefully see the parasitic nutrition in plants, what is parasitic nutrition? Parasitic nutrition is nothing but it's a one of the harmful type of nutrition in organisms. Some heterotrophic plants depending upon the other plants and animals for the nutrition. Do we know what are they called? They are called as a heterotrophic plants. Such plants are known as parasitic plants. However, the host is not benefited from the parasite. Now, let me say. For example, if you take the plants like cascuta and uh, cassita, cascuta and uh, the cassita, very good example, very familiar good examples for the parasitic nutrition. Now, how the parasitic nutrition commonly occurs? What are the top five parasitic plants in the nature? The corpus flower, Raphusia arnoldi, the first one, mistletoe, mistletoe, example, viscum album, and common name is given at the same time, botanical name is given. Western Australian, Western Australian Christmas tree. I'm talking about Christmas tree, exactly not a Christmas tree. Western Australian Christmas tree, which is Nutria florbrunda, Nutria florbrunda. Cactus mistletoe, cactus mistletoe. It is Tristectrix aphyla, Tristectrix aphyla. Whereas birds nest orchid, orchid, Neotia indus avis. So these are the five top five. We can call them as top five, top five uh, parasitic parasitic plants which shows parasitic nutrition. Now let us see one more uh, important point that is, if you say, if you take uh, the doder plant, doder, uh, the doder plant is nothing but, uh, uh, as I said, cactus is a doder plant. Doder plant contains no chlorophyll in their leaf. So instead of absorbing food through Astoria, uses, doder plant uses its Astoria, to absorb the food from other plants. What are Astoria? Astoria are their root-like structures. They are root-like structures through which penetrate into other plant tissues to absorb sufficient amount of water and nutrients from other plants. So by using this Astoria or root-like finger-like structures, it was able to kill or it was able to absorb the nutrients from other plants. Simultaneously, if it is absorbing all kind of nutrients or water content, whatever present in this plant, the host plant automatically dies. So that is why the cactus is considered as the one of the dangerous plant. Now, let me say a few more examples. Insectivorous nutrition. Some plants have special structural features that help them to trap insects. So these special plants these special plants, they have some devices which are modified from the plant parts like leaves and other branches. These traps or trappers helps in the process of capturing an insect for fulfilling their nitrogen requirement. They are showing nitrogen requirement. The nitrogen requirement fulfilled completely by this process called as a, the insectivorous nutrition. These plants can digest the insect directly through some enzymatic reactions in the 
special devices. Now, with the help of digestive juices, and uh, they can digest these insects. After digestion, they can absorb the nutrients which are present in the digestive. These plants grow on the soil that lacks minerals. Now, 